Welcome to the first part of my blind playthrough of Doki Doki Literature Club. So I've heard a lot of chatter about this on the internet. Um, I've seen Game Grunts play it. I think I've probably seen uh, Markiplier and Jacksepticeye and possibly PewDiePie as well. So everyone over the internet who's, you know, anyone is playing or has played this game. Um, and I figured, you know what, why not give it a go, eh? Uh, it's not the type of game that Pimsy would particularly enjoy because I believe this is a visual novel. Uh, at least that's what I've heard. Uh, so I figured, you know what, I'll try it out myself instead. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, so also, I've not really heard anything other than the fact that it's a visual novel. I think it's said to have horror elements, but I have literally no idea what to expect. So, also, just to let you guys know, I am testing out something a little bit different with our setup, obviously, because it's a PC game. I'm streaming directly from the laptop, and I'm going to try and keep an eye on chat on my phone. Uh, this may work out pretty well, this may not. Uh, we'll see. And also, the audio is going to be slightly different. So, obviously, the PC audio is where the music's coming from. But my microphone audio should sound a little bit different as well. It might be a little bit quieter than usual. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. We will see how this goes. All right, let's go into the new game then. Please enter my name. All right, I am Riggy Rob. There we go. Uh, also, I don't know if my cursor is being picked up on the screen, so I'm gonna say that doesn't really matter for the time being. But if it does matter, you guys should let me know. Hey. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together and on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently and I would get tired of waiting up. But what if she's gonna chase after me like this? I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha! <sighs> ha! I overslept again! But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh? You say that like you were thinking about adoring me! That's mean, Riggy Rob. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me, after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students, making their daily commute. By the way, Riggy Rob, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Uh, hello Remus, what the fuck are you playing? I'm playing Doki Doki Literature Club. Have you not heard about this, Remus? Uh, hello Amaterko as well. Thanks for joining the stream. How are you guys doing today? This is the last thing I expected. Yeah, no, you, yeah. This is, you know, I've heard a lot about this on the internet, so I'm expecting good things. Uh, people have said that you should stream this game, you should play this blind, you should, you know, this is a game to play apparently on the internet, so. Sayori so likes to worry a little too much about me, when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. That sounds like someone I know, Remus. 
Hint, hint. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. What the hell is a neat? You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise you you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. Uh, Remus says I want to just jump in and say I can't watch at the moment. Maybe in an hour or so. That's cool, Remus. Uh, I'm expecting a lot of this visual novel beginning to be just set up. And stuff will kick in maybe like a couple of hours in, possibly. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Neat. No education, employment, or training. Oh, okay. I've never heard that term before. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Pfft. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. Oh, also, by the way, Remus, let me know if the audio is a little bit different, because um, I have changed things around. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hint, hint, Remus. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting there and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know, know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sorry. Yeah? There is no way I'm going to your club. Eh? Nini. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one she, who proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. That said, my interest, uh, interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori's really that much of an airhead or if she's a cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yay! Let's go. Let's go indeed. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Riggy Rob, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. Ooh. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Sorry. Natsuki. Hm. The girl with a sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comfortably more mature and timid, seems to have had a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Oh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Riggy Rob. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. 
Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. League, sorry. Oh, hey, Dark Null. Thanks for joining the stream. How are you doing today? Yeah, this is literally the name of the game. Doki Doki Literature Club. Although, I don't know what Doki Doki actually means. It must be a catchphrase or something. So, having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Y you too, Monica. Come sit down, Riggy Rub. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me and Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to re reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Sakara. Thanks for joining the stream. What the hell? Why are you playing this? I'm not judging, but I didn't expect this. Uh, Ndoki Doki is the Japanese sound of a heart. Cool. I'm glad you're doing well as Dark Knoll. Have you guys not heard about Doki Doki Literature Club? I've heard loads of people talking about this game. In fact, it's like one of the one games that's like, you know when you ask for PC game recommendations? This is one of those games that like, you must play this game. Play it. It's free. Do it. And I figured as well, I was getting frustrated at a link to the past the other day. Why not play a game that's got basically no gameplay? So. So cute. I had no idea you were so good at baking, Netsuki. Well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori so grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori so talks with a mouthful, and has already managed to get icing on her face. Oh, excuse me, I think I'm gonna need to burp. Hopefully that didn't pick up the microphone. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Netsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Uh, Sakara says, I did hear about this game and I've played it myself, but I did not expect you to play it at all. Well, that's why I'm playing it by myself, because this is not the type of game that Pimsy would particularly enjoy. She doesn't tend to enjoy reading a lot. Is Natsuki waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavour. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... I it's not like I, I like you, Baka. Haven't I heard this somewhere before? I made them for you or anything. Yeah, I thought you technically did. Sayori said, well, maybe, but not for you, you know, you dummy. All right, all right. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, th that's not insulted. Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. Well, actually, in real life, I don't enjoy tea because it's just not my cup of tea. But I'm, I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Ah, <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. 
It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make it something special or something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. Yeah, there's literally only four of them. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. Kind of like getting people to play this game. Hmm. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they're all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Biggie Rob, what kind of thing do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? That's a pretty typical answer. I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. But not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of a teacup with her finger. My favourites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But, you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Hint, hint. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you, throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Hey, there we go, nice and early. Ah, I read a horror book once. Ah, I read one once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. And Dark Null says, I think it's better if you're the only boy in the club. What's that supposed to mean, Dark Null? What's that supposed to mean, eh? Hmm. Trying to turn it into a harem, are we? Monica says, really? I wouldn't expect that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you? I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind the, at the last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't say it out loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori so sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, not a very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Uh, no, I guess they don't feel comfortable at all. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aww, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Hmm? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. 
Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone's even. Uh, mm, mm. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little bit more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Riggy Rob? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on. There's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sierra may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought, because they're all staring at me. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Ricky Rob. You, you... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes! I'm so happy! Sayori so wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me there for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Woo! Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Be Rob, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Eh? Uh -huh. Yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Ricky Rob, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! Oh, that's nice. With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow close to one of the girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that's time to writing a poem tonight. Hmm. Okay, so I can... Ooh. Oh, okay. It's time to write a poem. Pick word you think your favourite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Oh, okay. Right, uh, hmm. Well, we can save a little bit of time just thinking about this, but let's see. So, we have a choice between four girls, although there's only three on this page, so I guess Monica isn't one to choose from for the time being. So this is Sayori, this is Natsuki, this is Yuri. Hmm, what, were, who should we go for? Hmm. Alright, you know what, I'll pick from my own perspective of a poem that I'd like to write. Let's do games. Um, philosophy? Yeah. Uh, eternity, bed, rain cloud, anxiety, heaven sent, climax. Ooh, I wonder where climax is going. Uh, I'm gonna go with bed. Yeah, nice sleep. All right, vitality, melody, promise. Yeah, let's go with melody. Email, dance, nature, festa, entropy, Ooh, Starscape, that's pretty good. Alright, uh, Misery, Nightgown, Clumsy, Variance, Judgment, Crimson. What? Why are these things here? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. There's nothing really good on this one. I guess I'll go with Analysis. Alright, so we got Imagination, Hair, Cute, Love, Infinite, Cage, Comfort, Puff, Anger, Giggle. Let's go with Infinite. Agonizing, misfortune, incongruent, vertigo, he covert, charm, headphones, papa, ocean and lipstick, headphones, shame, sweet, sing, laugh, depression, fireflies, unrestrained, warm, infallible, milk, fireflies. Uh, oh, are they reacting to the... Oh, uh, okay. So if I see them jumping around a little bit, then that's probably them reacting to my choice. Okay. Uh, let's go treasure. Alright. Uh, mm hmm. Heartbeat, cheeks, awesome. 
Uh, uh, sensation, precious, graveyard, sugar. Let's go rainbow. Blanket, daydream, electricity, strawberry family play. Yeah, electricity. Uh, <laughs> let's go with wonderful. Question. Val Ooh, it's just been Valentine's Day, actually. Uh, whisper, journey, flying, pleasure, puppy. Let's go with flying. <laughs> what a strange poem. Yeah, I kind of... It's just you have to pick words and you do word association and I'm assuming the poem will fill in afterwards. But yeah, this is a bit of a rain, uh, strange one. Uh, let's go with raindrops. Then scars, joy, bliss, tears, hopeless, special. Let's go special. Doki Doki! Uh, I guess I have to go with that now. Um, extraordinary, horror, passion, uncontrollable, after image, insight. Eyes on the inside. Uh, contamination, uncanny, fluffy, frightening memories. There, there we go. I'm interested to see what this poem comes out as, but yeah. Hi again, Riggy Rob. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Haha. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Riggy Rob. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature is when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on! It's like he deserves any slack. So you already told me you didn't even want to join the clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come in and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps a manga collection in the club room. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Yeah, you keep telling yourselves that. Keep telling yourselves that. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plots back into a seat. Don't worry, guys. Regrub always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. Yeah. Unlike yesterday. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sierra, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. Ooh. How come? You and Regrub can become good friends too. Uh, um, um, Sayori? Hmm? Causing embarrassment to everyone. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Well, wait, Sayori? Eh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? But never mind. Siri made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that's mean it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Uh, is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. Whoo! That's a bit of a backhanded compliment. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you! I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Whew! Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Siori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was awaiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Hmm. Man. It looks like nobody wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayo's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. 
The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm... That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Zero is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear a deliberating like this. Hmm, that is a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? Or what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! <laughs> good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speaks to my creative tummy. Oh, is uh, Sayori the, the, the eating girl? I'm expecting there to be a lot of anime tropes in this. Uh, and we've got Goat Peoples on Twitch. Hello, Goat Peoples. Thanks for joining the stream. How are you doing today? Cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder, what would it be like to see the world through her eyes? Ooh, the foie. It's a bit close. Personal space, much Sayori. I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around at her. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Ah. I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's toothpaste stain on your collar right there. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Yeah, I've had that in the past. You know, you have a toothpaste stain on your tie and it's like, nobody's going to point it out to you, but you're going to look silly the whole time. Fortunately, I don't really care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have... Oh. Ooh. Why, don't, why do you think you don't have a boyfriend, Jack? Going in for the kill there. Uh, Goat People says I'm doing quite fine. That's good to hear. I'm glad you're doing okay. I'm doing alright as well. It's going to be interesting to see where Doki Doki Literature Club goes. I've heard a lot about it. Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Oh, Ah, okay. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Huh? Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this so, one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Really near her chest? Hmm. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Just don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway. You look much better now, so... 
Uh, why does it feel strange to see so it's base of blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Whew. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying it like, like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anybody else would. Anyway, so that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, let's just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus to go into bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's been possible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Hmm? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Read your up. I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah, I did. My relaxation ends, and anxiety begins. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. And Dark Knoll says, I'm enjoying this game. It's... it's... well... At the moment, it's generic anime tropes, but it's got a kind of humour to it that I'm enjoying as well. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same, myself. Alright, let's see how this goes. Ooh, okay. Who should I show my poem to first? Alright, I'm gonna give you guys a quick survey. Do you guys have a particular preference on who I should choose, or just, you know, go with the flow? At the moment, I'm assuming Sayori is like the default choice, because she's the neighbour next door. Uh, Natsuke is the Sundere, the, the one that doesn't like you secretly, but no, the one that pretends not to like you but secretly does. Yuri's kind of the just the generic um, academic one that just likes everything. And then Monica is like the, yeah, let's go get him, we're the class president, woo, popular one. Uh, Dark Null says Yuri's the best tool now. Alright, let's go with Yuri then, shall we? I'm kind of academic myself anyway, so... Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion, to be fair. Hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh, sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um. It's fine, don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah? Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, so it's that bad. No, 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 no. Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't got anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognise in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanour totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um... Well... 
Uh, never mind. I shouldn't be talking to pe about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Hmm. Yeah, this is a bit weird. Okay, so. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing, it must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the set test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers, and I flicker back. Get outside the poem era to continue. Alright, let's do that. I I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. It was a little bit hard to read, actually, but it's fine. Don't worry about it, Yuri. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Oh, does this game actually keep track of how long you're taking to read it? Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, well, I just don't read scripts very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little bit more mild. Something easy to di digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Ricky Bob. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you only did glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. Well, that's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Oh, right, so you actually you get the choice to go to all of them. Okay, um... Let's see... Who is the best option next? Uh, I'm quite interested to see what Natsuki's like. Hmm? Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. I just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. <sighs> well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly. People can try, but that's about it. Hmm. I like the music change as well. Hmm. Yeah. I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of po point oh, blah, blah, blah. Isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight in the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humour her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki's feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Oh, knowing how old people are in anime is very important. Okay. Okay. Um. Alright, well, let's go with Monica. Monica next. Hi, Riggy Rob. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. 
Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever any, have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Riggy Rob. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Siri like would like. Really? Hmm, okay. I see where this is getting pushed to. Is that so? You and Siori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had these sort of things in common. Uh, well, we may be good friends, but Siori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that might be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't, find, wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you, it sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You're sure you're not reading into it a bit too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Siri's writing has a kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles. Well, I'll always help you find whatever suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not that you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You're the president of the club. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it. Okay. <clears throat> Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late, my retinas. Already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, what do you think? Hmm. It's very free form, if that's what you'd call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the time between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. Ooh, okay. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. Hmm, okay. What's the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind, some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem, or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Yeah, that's a good point. That's kind of like one of the best tips you can ever have as a writer or as any creative force. Basically, just start making stuff and the, the quality will come later. Another way of thinking about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Sure, that's decent advice. And the last one is, of course, Sayori. So, let's see what Sayori's got to say. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Ricky Rob! Huh? I love it! I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. 
Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. Yuri's opinion was way more constructive than this. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Riggy Rub poem. Hashtag Riggy Rub. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hunks the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. Eh? Uh -huh. I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Riggy Rob. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this is for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motives here. What is your motives here? Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now you'll be able to read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Alright, what we got? Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleep before my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Hmm, okay. Breakfast. She's basically a hobbit at heart. Sayori, this is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still try my best. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, so... How should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast! Even though you were late to school? It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Uh -huh. This was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. I guess we do, don't we? Whew! I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, do you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Oh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Huh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it didn't really come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Rigurub did, too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. And Rigurub liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realise you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, eh? <laughs> you can hear the little the change in the music. That's not what I, I, uh, You're just... 
Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Ruby Rob appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh. And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? Uh, no. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose booze magically grew a size bigger as soon as Rigrob started showing up. N Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I don't like fighting, guys! Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Rigrob! She she's just trying to make me look bad! That's not true! She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all conv convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Riggy Rob. But wait! There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning most effectively. Avoiding them is not only necessarily unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Riggy Rob? Um, well? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Uh, so of course that's gonna- ooh, okay. Hmm... Right, so... Well, we chose Yuri first, because we've said that, you know, Yuri's been the best so far. Uh, the thing about their boobs magically growing is okay, that's a bit weird, but sure. Um, Netsuki, I kinda do appreciate the simplicity of the writing, but the poem was a bit... stale, I guess? And if I was to sort of make a choice between those two, I'd probably go with Yuri again. But I wonder what Sayori will do. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I think I'll go with Yuri anyway. Natsuki. You're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait! That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm, I understand. Yuri. Eh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. But, well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it, and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that I... I'm sorry. Oh. But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said things that you don't mean. Yuri apologized, don't you think you should too? Mm. Natsuki clenches a fist. In the end, nobody's taken her side. She's trapped, at this point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sorry, she doesn't need to. You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki. She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in the adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, alright, I believe you. Thanks, Ringy Rub. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you part of this club now. Uh, it's nothing. One more thing. That one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, hmm? what thing did Natsuki say? Uh, um, well, never mind that. I'm going to go and make some tea. Ah, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. What was she going to say? Hmm. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hardship. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Mostly. Regrub, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. 
and maybe you learn something about your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can do at least a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Big you up! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this too much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Aww. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Netsuki, does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You know, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Whew! You know, Riku Rob, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... Yeah. Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? Oh, uh, I see. I see the intentions of this game. Okay. We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as the internal monologue sometimes. That's actually like a... And that's a real writing device, having someone project the conscience or the internal monologue of a different character. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's do it. Okay. So, what do we have? Uh, let's have Destiny. Uh, let's do Determination. Mm, let's do Imagination. Um... Uh, well, we did games last time. Let's do music. Uh, ooh, intellectual. Uh, ooh. Uncontrollable seems to have like a negative context in this view, so I'm gonna go with peaceful. Uh, ooh, sensation. That's good. Uh, <laughs> unrequited. I've never seen unrequited not followed by love. Let's go with sparkle. Uh, 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 amazing. And then let's go with awesome. Uh, <laughs> vivid. And then, well, we did Doki Doki last time. Let's do wonderful. Uh, and childhood. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go with climax because I know what that's going to turn into. Let's go with portrait. What? What? What is that? Effulgent? Hmm. Huh. Never heard that word before. Uh, let's go with boot. Vivacious. Anime! Uh, let's see. We've got Daydream. Yeah, let's go da Daydream. Family. <laughs> Explode. Let's go family. Uh, incongruent. That's a good word. Festa. Uncle Festa. Tenacious D! And then last, let's go for chocolate. Yeah, there we go. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable over here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Riggy Rob! Yo, Siori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm still, st I'm just still not used to being in the club after all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in the sh good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you, anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that, all of a sudden? No reason, really. Just that you're broke. I just want to have a look at it. Uh, uh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fill out. Fall out, rather. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and you wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would just lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Ooh, ah! 
I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, then that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in a book, as always. I, I, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell Rigorov to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Siori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fa fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Uh... <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Jerry. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad and now I have to accept the revolution. Oh, uh, I was about to say, revolution? That's not the word. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess if there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> what? Kia! Out of nowhere, something smacks Yori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Huh? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori Lee rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Oh, God. Hmm? Sayori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, oh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me, though. <laughs> Suri gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Suri off of her. Oh. Suri suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Ooh. Mouthful, Sayori trots away up to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Oh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't heard either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? That's a bit self-deprecating. Jeez. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over their boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. The boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track, lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard of the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Why is she always looking at me? What's that got to do with anything? Jeez. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd always so look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Riggy Rob. Monica smiles. Whoa, that was a weird ch change there. All eyes on Monica. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. 
I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love to have a chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will probably end up complaining to her anyway about it. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Riku up! Riku up! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival's coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go and find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Oh, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Uh, are you going with Riku to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd have to go with him. Aw, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find the post paper too, okay? Okay! Ready, Riku Rob? Yep, let's go. Hmm. Finding supplies in school. Siori and I and exit the club room. I follow behind as Siori hums and skips around the hall. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Siori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Siori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how would you make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're going to do a poetry performance, like a dead poet society, perhaps. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone's going to take turns on the stage and recite their favourite poems. Ah, huh, that sounds kind of dull. Biggie Rob, you're not thinking about it in the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of a poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what end have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. Sorry. How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty unordinary, unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that. It's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, I'm so excited. The festival's gonna be so much fun. Suri spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, we grew up. This classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I spent time with Suri like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Siori brings about a special sort of feeling I'd forgot I had any. Oh, that's nice. The two of us enter the classroom. Siori heads straight into the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Siori pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Siori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the colour names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favourite colour. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so we can look for the post paper there. Ah, I dropped one by accident. Smack. Kya! Siri bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her. Ow! Ow! You okay? My forehead. Siri clutches her forehead. Jeez, Siori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Yuri's sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Siori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Siori slowly releases her hand from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. I never got why hair is called bangs. It's not used in the UK whatsoever, and bangs being used to describe hair just like, why? We have fringe. Can you not just use the fringe? Anyway. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Where you are? Why don't I even find ice around this time? Oh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. 
I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. <laughs> looking like a unicorn. That's good, that's good. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Uh, okay. Off to find a cold drink. Surely the school should have like a nurse's office though. I pat Siri on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since we use it as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Siori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Siori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to cl clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least we're already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Siori, here. I hand Siori the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Siori opens the caps and starts drinking from it. Siori, what are you drink? What are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Siori places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Wiggy Rob. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I'd always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You'd try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if somebody found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. Aww. Pay attention to the people around you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, I, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Think you are, Rob. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Don't call me that. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Here you up. I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But... Well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Siri has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that's when I see her deep in thought like this. It makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's going to see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Siri hops to her feet. Uh, she clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Uh, well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. Back to the classroom. I follow Siori out of the classroom. Siori plays with the bangs to try and hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was just about to start with sharing our poems. Eh? Siori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about it. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my head into the foot and into the shelf. I thought the whole point was not to make Monica worry about it. Well, anyway, were you able to find out, uh, find everything we needed? Uh huh. I have it right. Huh? Sorry, frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Sorry. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Riggy Rob. Uh, well, Sorry. I failed to come up with an excuse for Siori. I made an adventure! Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crane box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Who should I show my poem to first? Huh, well, I guess we're gonna stick with Yuri for the time being. This does seem like the type of game where you make a choice and you stick with them over and over and over again. But maybe there's a different way, maybe there's something different that happens if you, you know, change things around every now and then. Hmm. Okay. 
Let's go with Yuri first. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Riggy Rob. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. You know, you, I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it feels like you can't get your phone to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little bit more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like you're turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Well, of course. Is this the poem you want to wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. What? What? An ordinary human? Okay, uh, I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon and urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm already merely projecting my emotions with a newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to follow me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. These ones by Yuri are a little bit on the darker side, I find. Hmm. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid images and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because... Because they're sociopathic? They're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Do you have anything like that, Riggy Rob? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is repeat each other in our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Alright, uh, let's show the poem to Monica next. And we'll go to Natsuki last, I think. Hi again, Riggy Rob. How's the writing going? Uh, she does seem to like the knife a lot, Dark Knoll. Or maybe the raccoon likes it more. I'm wondering if it's a metaphor for I have a rush of blood, therefore I'm getting a rush out of using the knife rather than, you know, helping an animal. It's really odd. Anyway. Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright, it's pretty good. It makes me think of Siori, like the other one that you wrote. You've got Siori on the brain, Monica. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm still just getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. 
I get what you're saying. Well, all right. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like pay playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Save me, load me. Huh, okay. Hmm. Alright. Uh, we do have these buttons at the bottom that I've not really done anything with. Can we do save? Did that save? Uh, I've got no idea. Alright, well. Oh! Ooh, okay. Save. Yep. Yeah, that is today's date and time. Okay. Let's return. Hmm. Well, that's a bit odd. Alright. That's the save system, I guess. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never so said that. It's just kind of a thing I'd never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it is about, though. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be an abstract or as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. With the reader. Hmm. Yes, with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. <sighs> oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I've saved it now. You never know when you might change your mind when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? No, it's about playing this game. What are we even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. All right, well, let's go for Sayori. Mm, bring you up. I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Uh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. Uh, maybe she's sad. Maybe she is sad. I don't know. Save me. I think saving your game is pretty direct though. It's like, hey, pay attention. Save your game. I mean, you're really the only one that feels that way, so... Eh? No way. Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? What? Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand why I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head in a very patronizing way. Aha, hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, we grew up. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> what? Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah! I broke my pencil. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive or surrounding, she bumps right into me. S -s Sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Siri clutches the desk behind her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. Yeah, you don't say. You banged your head, you broke the pencil. <laughs> Let's sit down, Siori. Yeah. 
I grab Sayori's arm and help us to the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. Ugh. Okay. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of your bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the roots, nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look low through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other. Hold them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be my, for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Hmm. Okay. These poems are definitely taking a darker turn. Holy crap. Siri, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to be being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is all like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this. Ooh, excuse me. <clears throat> You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sierra's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. And then last but not least, Natsuki! Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better, either. <sighs> huh? Phew what? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey! What makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh? Huh? You think so? Yeah. Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same way with But you never really showed me as a type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so, uh, fluffy? Spend so much time with someone like you. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. That was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away uh, like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I am supposed to guess I'm supposed to show you my poem too. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favourite love song. Every time she rang the, sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her front hands were probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. That's a bit harsh. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Huh. 
Okay, I wonder what that's getting at. Metaphorically wise. Hmm. You're not fooling me, xylophone music. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I don't have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realise how stupid they were being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something you're afraid of, people find out, they'll make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as it's not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn respect for the people liking weird things. Oh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Hmm? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said a poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well... I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh... It's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviours and stuff... I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday! But the way you put it, it's not like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Okay. Yeah, that was a bit extreme, wasn't it? You don't- you like spiders, therefore I'm going to tell everyone that you like spiders, and that's really weird. I wonder if it's kind of like a... I like spiders, but I've written this poem about how nobody likes me, and how somebody stole, uh, told my secret to everybody. Something along those lines, anyway. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if someone- everyone could sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting away any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sarah's been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, oh, sorry. I thought you'd heard about it already. We're going to be performing! Performing? P um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sorry's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to write a, pre a prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sorry, who's been colouring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Did you really think that's bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot for her to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will, be in it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. 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 Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that you brought here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. 
Siri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sio and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Netsky doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I just have to get it over with. All right. Whew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Uh, is that foreshadowing? Anyway, um, oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to be practiced reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It is called... After image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure, and that she enunciates with perfect timing. This movie must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps in concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to into a seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri's down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Siri hops out of a chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, ah ha ha. Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Siori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or your own head. Uh, it's your poem, so I'll come out the best way. <laughs> Hello, Reaper. Thanks for joining the stream. Um, I know you said I will not see this, um, but yeah, no, I've heard a lot about this. Uh, we're about, uh, what, an hour and a half in, an hour and 45 minutes in, and it's so far, it's been kind of standard visual novel fare. I'm waiting for a change to kick in. So yeah, I want to say hello, it's me. Hello, Reaper. Yeah, I'm not gonna say you have to stay or anything. Obviously, you've got other things in your life. If you don't wanna watch this, then feel free, but I figured I was going to try this out to see exactly what was the rage about this. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering if after all these years I'd like to be just a little bit of Adele. Hello, it's me. Anyway, I see, I see. Okay then. Siori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Siori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Siori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Siori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. 
Story finishes and we applaud. I did it! And Reaper says bye guys. Bye Reaper! Good job, Siori. <laughs> even Riggy Rub likes it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Siori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little bit more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time we're going to make you pick a poem that challenges a little bit more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go before Riggy Rob. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Riggy Rob lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put whatever face I want on for other people. When it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. Aw, she considers us friends. It's nice. That's a surprise, Netsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know what ahead of time we'd be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish playing tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Yuri Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Siori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little bit nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Riggy Rob, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. Hmm. So I can see that the player character is already getting pushed towards Monica, but Siori as the neighbor next door type is like, well, maybe you should be picking her instead of Monica, because she's known you all her life and blah blah blah. We'll see how it turns out. I walk home with Siori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already been changed. But today, Siori's being a little bit quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Siori. Hmm? Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean, Siori fumbles with the words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to help walk home with you. Huh? Oh, it's so Yuri. Okay. What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. <laughs> oh, right. Hmm. Uh, I guess the question is then, do I commit to Yuri now? Because that's not getting any other options, so... 
Yuri or Siori? I'm going to say that we should probably keep up the tradition of walking home with Sayori. So let's do that. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see you in the club every day. Besides, Yuri's already always seem to really like going home together. I won't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Riggy Rob. You think about me way too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted, so... Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sierra to care so much about. But I want her to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Who knows? Who knows indeed? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for a minute there, I thought mousing over the different words caused the, the the little chibis to jump up, but I guess not. All right, let's go with color, uh, sugar, uh, sunset, uh, extraordinary, um, warm. Let's go with. Hmm, we already did treasure, didn't we? Let's do. Uh, 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 smile. Then sing. Uh, special. And let's go with uh, silly. Mm -hmm. Destiny. I think we did destiny last time, but it's fine. Let's go with crimson. And you'll have noticed that I'm actually avoiding all of the negatively associated words. Uh, mainly because I don't want to go with those options just yet. Let's go lucky. Uh, after image. Oh, after image. Crimson Eye of the after image. And then meadow, and then jump. Right, maybe I was supposed to pick words that are blinding up with their uh, poems. Hmm, let's go with after image then. And let's go with fluffy. And we'll do a little dance. Uh, we did raindrops. Breathe. No, together. Together's good. Oh, let's go with kiss. Mm. And then precious. There we go. Sounds like a fine poem. A fine poem indeed. Oh man. I'm the last one here again? Don't worry, I just walked in soon. Are you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're willing to help out with the festival too. Ah, oh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great! Yeah. Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Netsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica! Do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Uh, I've seen enough hentai to where this, where this is going. Hey, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you, of all people? Because it's right in your name. Mon Ika. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Is that an English to Japanese joke? Hmm? Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Uh, uh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Hmm. Huh. Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be happy? Oh, sorry. Um, Crimson made Yuri happy. Oh, okay. Hmm. It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Suri shows me a big smile. 
Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Siori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed, with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe we should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Siori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Big Rob, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little bit too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Figgy Rob. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her for myself. Hey, are you sure about that? She seemed like she would want to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing in her mind is you, Riggy Rob. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Siri talks to you about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? She's been so much happier ever since she joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Siri's always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now that it's always been. <laughs> You're so funny, Ricky Rob. Have you thought maybe you've always seen her as cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Hmm. Uh, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know, anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Huh. Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Siori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Siori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet I can't hear from her. Hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Siori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. This music's pretty good. It's simple but catchy to just loop uh, endlessly. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. I wonder indeed. All right, let's go with Natsuki first. This one's all right. All right? Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's, anyway. I see what you're going for, but it's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. I'm mostly just glad that you're trying to a little bit. Well, of course I'm at least trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems, anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? Eh? No? Gross! It's not like I care, Baka. It's just that one of us in this club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? Well, what if you ended up just scaring me away? Uh, uh, some... It's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if I have to put up with you. <sighs> Natsuki's elbow connects with my stomach. Oh, maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. <laughs> How the hell do you call that a joke? That's just a punch in the gut. That seriously hurt. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just watch my mouth towards Natsuki. Anyway, Natsuki holds a poem out to me like nothing even happened. Okay. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminish your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought you had left long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand, wash your insecurities in the salty sea, 
and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in the footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. And remember the things you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that makes you dream that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought I had left long ago. But if you left me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Oh, that's nice. Da -da, da -da. Da -da -da. <laughs> yeah, I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. It's kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decide to write about the beach first and then come up with a message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it, or whatever. Ugh, you can really see her doing that, too. Making us write about a simple topic and then trying to impress me with coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too, but there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Alright. Uh, let's go with... Uh, <laughs> let's go with... Sayori. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Riku up. Uh, thanks. Mm-hmm. Sayori, you've been a little bit quiet today. Is everything alright? Uh-huh. Of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I just am a little tired today. Well, you always oversleep, so... Yeah, I guess that could be true. Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, alright. Hey, where you up? I'm still a little surprised. I really thought you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end... Yeah? I guess you're the one that likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get close with everyone else? Wait, of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you, you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. Uh, he's trying to quote someone else. I think it was Monica. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when you think about you. Sayori? No. Riki Rob, I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Siri has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Siori. I glanced around the room to make sure nobody else, else has noticed this. Siori, I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what we cheer you up. Siori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Riggy Rob. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm going to go home a little bit early today. Sorry. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sierra cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Huh, okay. Uh, let's go with... Monica, and we'll go with Yuri last. Hi, Riggy Rob. Have you thought about we want to submit to the perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Uh -huh. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. <laughs> it's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Siori poems have been getting more and more similar to each other every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? Uh, I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't seen as much of her this past year. But since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me about how Siori's been a, bit, a little bit off today. Yeah, did she tell you something? Uh, well... Big Rub, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? Oh, of course not. I've been treating her like I always do. Alright, just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Sarah's been acting so much happier ever since you joined the club. What could have happened all of a sudden? Hmm. Well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? 
Uh, all right. All right. So, the lady who knows everything. An old tale of tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Last adrift the sky, victim of the current's wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. For when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is that all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the toilet sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall. And I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather. A dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. For I, before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Hmm, okay. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it's kind of on my own mind. Blah, blah, blah. On my mind. So that's what I thought wrote about. I see. I never really put that much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we all had the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Yeah, I did notice that. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. If we find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things that you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Sure, sure. Alright, and last but not least, Yuri. There we go. Well done, Ricky Rob. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this is a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first. But now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I can't really disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore, but it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. But it's been fun getting to know everyone in their writing. Wow, that was a bit weird. Kind of have like a, a line for internal monologue. Well, anyway, I guess doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Ricky Rob? Yeah? Well, you know how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself? In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know? As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Eh? Why me? Well, you're always sophisticating your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Hmm? For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome? How unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. It just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always think and come to those sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little bit too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked? Yuri. Wh what? What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. You want to share your poem now? Okay. Here. Beach. Oh, there's two about being the beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth cha chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath grey rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? On will a sudden wave, or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles. But my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. 
The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I stick my toes into the ultimate boundary uh, line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to erode at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. So yeah, I've got two two poems about the beach there. Interesting. Hmm. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of a name thing to write about, but I did my best to make a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Natsuki already told me about it. She did? She didn't say anything weird, did she? She just wanted to write about the same topic again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought, process, thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she wants to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have to go uh, have a particular interest in her writing style. I just don't want to do a request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh... Stagnating air is common foreshadowing for something terrible that's about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Siori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Siori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Actually, she wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. That is actually a good point. She went home by herself, didn't ask us to come with her. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Siori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh? That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. We might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pam pam pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, Yuri, you can, uh, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? Uh, I'm useless. No, 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 that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Now Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Yuri enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder than you when she's not around. Ah, uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere! Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Rigurob. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact... Both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a little bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Mikuro might not be like to be around you if you only make him up to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that! How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds like you're just making excuses for Mikuro to- What are you saying? It'll be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Rigorov to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, 
He hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally, literally just said... I I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just sell this already? Yeah. Regroup. You're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, well, of course. Hmm. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Oh, of course. I'm going to go with... Oh, you get the option for all four. Interesting. Okay. So, we can either go back with Sayori to check on Hana, which I think is probably a good idea. Uh, the game pushes the player character with Monica, so that's probably the second option we could take. And then Natsuki and Monica are the two options you can take, like whether you want to go with uh, Natsuki to make baking and turn her into I don't like you into I do like you. And Yuri is just like um, kind of just bashful about it in general. So I think the, well, I don't think there's a correct option at this point, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the game. Uh, save it here before this critical choice uh, and then let's go with Sayori I mean if it's going to be anyone then I prefer helping Sayori I mean we're already neighbours and but Monica said Monica said that Sayori was helping her jeez do you really hate us that much but no sorry I didn't mean for this to be difficult oh yeah. <laughs> you don't get the option to go with Sayori okay um Hmm. Well, if Sayori is helping Monica, then we should help Monica as well. Let's go with Monica. Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yay, you picked me! Hold on one second! Yeah! Monica, you're the one that needs the least help out of all of us! Eh? But I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, you already have Sayori as well. But Regan Rupp was the one who... That doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place! You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? Well, what are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with the ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do, you know? We won't do as good a job if you make us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, uh, so you're going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. <sighs> it's technically most logical for Rigorov to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. So you have to actually pick between Natsuki and Yuri. Okay. Well, that's a whole big rigmarole around that, but alright. We went with Yuri for most of it, so let's go with Yuri now. Well, I'll probably be more useful helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you... Natsuki, I can already tell you about to say something mean. No, I was just saying. <sighs> so you'll be helping Yuri then, Riggy Rob? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bit bad habit of overthinking these sort of things. So I think your assistant will be very useful. It's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking by yourself? You mean, yeah? I already said it would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. She's always sour. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited might not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Riggy Up? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? <laughs> Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glanced between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Riga Rob picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and uh, I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. 
because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No. I kind of appreciate it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. Hmm? You better bet that my cupcake's going to be the best part of the whole event. Ugh. I believe you. Yeah. I have to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out of the door as they chat between each other. Uh, um, eh? I turn around. Sorry, I realized that I don't have any way of contact contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then. You and I exchange phone numbers. Okay, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? Is that a problem? No, no, not at all. I just thought I'd be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. I, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I'd prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I managed to make myself some useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Ricky Rob. I think that will make a great, very, very productive team. Even if you only choose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I wanted to do. But Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Huh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After the exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. Da, da, da. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday? Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori. My, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. Uh, hide the knives and the raccoons. Yeah, that's a good point. Hide every single knife in the house. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Siri finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. Dum -da -dum. Is it Sunday? It's already Sunday! I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clear clearly an introvert, and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when she's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've even been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Siri since she left the club earlier the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what you Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Well, I tried to go with her, but then people the game said no. I was like, yeah, she's been feeling ill. Oh, go help Sayori. But then game says no. Oh well. I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we're family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Ricky Rob! I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It's been in a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it would be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know about that? Sarah had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, that's true. What about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. 
Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Siri stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... Siri smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Riggy Rob. Huh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Siori, that's a bit dark. Okay, well, whatever. I grab Siori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. <laughs> Siri gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Riggy Rob. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Siori? <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Riggy Rob? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression in my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. Ooh, I'm in shock. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot to unload on a person. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Siori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me just to not think about her? Why, Sayori? Huh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could do to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little bit better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you have to do is tell me. You don't understand at all, Riggy Rob. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing other important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get close with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Rigirob. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Siri's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Uh, Ricky Rob? Siori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please, never under underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you, Rob. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my heart, my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Riggy Rob, I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all I want for is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have, it to have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what it needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Riggy Rob. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Siori lets me go. 
and she does so, I let go of her as well. The festival's tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like me for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh, it's what I want. I promise. I, I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It'll be fun. To my surprise, Yuri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard to be for me to at least fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. I don't, don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. Wow, she kind of bared her soul there. Huh. I say goodbye to Siori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over too. I think Siori's right. I shouldn't be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have detected me. If I'd known, I would have reassured you and heard mo more on the way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure I'll be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Uh, that would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which is in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh... I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap as if making sure she's keeping track of him. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yeah. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? Yeah, that's a weird way of saying it. You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know he had plan planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. I'm kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I just happened to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's the wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favourite contributions to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes a cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapour begins to spout through a small hole in the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel the flow of your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that'll be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. Well, what are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I've got it over here. We'll be using the paper for folding origami. 
What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbons to cut from the hang from the doorway out of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker we grew up. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Uh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to match my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Oh no, she's got a knife! She's got a knife! Eh? Uh, the knife is strangely beautiful. Her silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary, no ordinary pocket knife. That looks really fancy. Uh, well, embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird, Yuri. Whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To reach their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. Called it! Dark Knoll, you called that ages ago. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe? Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's... Well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri, Yuri, Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hand. It feels heavy and extremely solid. What do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife on my index finger. Ow! Here you are! Why did you do that? I didn't expect to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. Yeah, it's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a, wound a closer look. Uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah! Without yawning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively, instinctively pull my hand back. Uh-oh. Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri? That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh... Sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise. But I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger. <laughs> what? Why? Why would you do that? That's just creepy. Wake you up! Did you really just do that? Now or even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. Yeah. If not for the sweet rum of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Riggy Rob. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where'd you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I knew one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. This is getting out of control. Yeah, it... <laughs> Before you know it, she'll be like, Ooh, I like the way the blood flows on the knife. Let me try and write some words and poems into your back, Riggy Rob. Anyway. After we finish off attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out by side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Oh, that's right. 
One of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolour paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? No, of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you feel the cup's too much, it'll be too di diluted. Oh, we're going to get like a mini game to do that? Or what? Hmm, anyway. Taking Yuri's advice, I decided to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, putting it back over her arm. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we'd do something simple that looked very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colours for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an insp inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Oh, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. Uh, if you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colours across the banner to serve as a colour guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolours feels a lot like the art class project we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri starts painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when we can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading. It doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes, me things, makes, me, makes things feel a little better. A little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me feel happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Yeah! So sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Uh, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel that I dampen with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back in, down in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Ah, uh, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry, I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Huh? Just for a little longer. She's got really, really dark irises. Uh, not irises. Um, eyeshadow? Like, it's like black eyelashes and then, then red lids? It's really weird. And it feels really nice. Huh. I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What's happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be clutched much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. Uh, it's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's, a pretty, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here than have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, 
I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Whew. <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we'd have extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there'd be more time as well. Uh, it's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all of her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Hmm. Hmm. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I was glad to be able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow? Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over or we can go out somewhere. Uh, oh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Riggy Rob. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Is it Siori? Eh? Uh, hi, Riggy Rob. Siori! Just now, we weren't... Eh, <laughs> it's okay, Riggy Rob. I just stopped by to say hi. Ooh, this is gonna look so bad. It's gonna look so bad. Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already working on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. We'll be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course. Siori so beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. And exit stage left. Siori waves goodbye after her. Siori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri, and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy. You made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Siori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Riggy Rob? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Siori, don't say that. It's true, Riggy Rob. If I wasn't here, then you would have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Is Monica actually going there? Is she actually doing that? Siori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it makes and it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but Siori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Riggy Rob. I'm really scared. What are you scared of? I'm scared that that I might like you more than you like me. Siori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Riggy Rob. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Siori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Siori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give to you. Oh, okay. Whew. Right. But what's the best way to do this? Yeah, you know what the best one is. I love you, Sayori! Eh? Those are my true feelings. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helps me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. 
As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Thank you, Rob. Suddenly, Sayori wraps her arms tightly around me. Thank you, Rob. Is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her in closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Iggy Rob. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What's this? Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now. Why won't the rain clouds go away? Oh, the rain clouds is the metaphor for depression. I see. They're not going to go away at all, Riggy Rob. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Uh, okay. I trust you. Siori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow. Our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it always has been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle any more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go whatever, whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Riggy Rob. Sorry gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Huh? I don't really understand what Sorry means by that. Are you saying this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you loved me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's, the point. that's my promise. I say that, but in reality I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more, something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting to, anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. Alright, it's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Siori, but she's not answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but I decided that's a little bit too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I printed is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Siori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Riggy Rob, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the one she prepared that has all the poems been performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't think bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she's overslept again. That dummy. You think that on days that this on days this important, she try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what T Siori told me yesterday. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you forget already? And I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. You didn't give me the option to. <laughs> you should take a little of responsibility for a riggy rob. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But I stammer, embarrassed. Did Siori really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Also, the fact that there's no music is a bit weird. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flick through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flip to, I flip to Siori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Oh. Oh. Well, that's no good. So, huh. Percentage sign. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. 
get in my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished, it just stops moving. Hmm. Monica's a bit sketchy. She's a bit sketchy. Ah. Uh, what's this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Read you up? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Fiori's written. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Siori, so... Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Siori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Siori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up a phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Siori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house? That really is something a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Siori's room, I knock on the door. Siori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. That's not good news. That is not good news. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Ooh. Whew. Well, that's a bit creepy. Okay. Wow, this music. Ooh. Oh, an exception has occurred. File game scripts. See traceback.txt for details. Okay. Whew. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Siri wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I'm suppressing the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Siri I would be there, there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her? I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Siori needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Uh, why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. I, My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like it was always has been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do to bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Oh. Okay. That is... Uh... Uh, <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, so, the new game option is literally not even there anymore. And uh, Monica has changed into a, like an amalgamation of Siori. No, Siori. Oh, hang on. This is Monica. This is Siori, but mixed in with Monica as well. Oh god, that's weird. <sighs> oh. Um <laughs> There's no change in that. Well, I don't know how this is going to pan out. Um uh, yeah. Well. Okay. I guess that is one way to finish off Doki Doki Literature Club. Mm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, as with most visual novels, um, it seems like you'll have to get play the game multiple times to get the correct ending. And I kind of screwed up quite a bit. Although Monica, I am not trusting one bit. So yeah. All right. Well, I think that is enough for one stream. Um, I don't. 
I don't particularly feel like doing any more right now. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching the stream, guys. I hope you enjoyed... No, not enjoyed it. I hope you found it in... Mm, it's not even interesting. Thanks for watching the stream. Um, you can follow us on Twitch, and you can subscribe on Twitch. Uh, you'll get these unique emotes with the uh, Coda Cats, who I think I'm going to give a hug now. <laughs> um, we've got streams Mondays, Wednesdays, sometimes Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, on Monday, I'll be doing Splatoon 2 again. Uh, Pimsy is back tomorrow, so she won't be... Well, she, she'll be away on Mondays as normal, but she'll be able to join in streams again from next week. Um, and yeah. What is with this cheery music? Why? A new game is literally gone forever. <sighs> Alright. Okay. My brain is frazzled. And I'm now thinking of like, alright. Do I reload the game and go back to where there were some breakpoints? Say, you know, don't go with Yuri, go with Sayori and stuff like that. Oh, we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all next time.